Hi, my name's Devin. I'm going to do a quick uh, out-of-the-box review of the new PV Impulse powered 12D. They're 1200 watts each. Feature a 12-inch Scorpion woofer. This has a dual voice coil at 4 ohms with a new Neo Magnet. It's also a fuel basket replaceable. And also the uh, the ribbon driver for the, the kind of the mids to highs. This uh, driver is featured in their first array systems for stadium applications and they're kind of the first to use the ribbon in a PA setup. So let's go ahead and get started. This is just an out of the box review for a kind of a quick look at what you're going to see when you get it out of the box. I've got two units here. Uh, one of them is actually from uh, American Musical Supply, this guy right here. This one was a scratch and dent special, so I kind of took a gamble there, but it turned out pretty good. And this one's from uh, Zounds.com. And this one was a brand new unit. All right, so I'll start with the uh, scratch and dent unit from American Musical Supply first. So when you open the box, this one was actually a scratch and dent. And when I received it, I don't know if you can see this box. I was hoping the box was the reason for the scratch and dent. I was a little hesitant to accept the, uh, the packaging. It ended up just being a couple scratches on the heat sink is all I could find. Other than that, it's perfect, perfectly working unit. Inside the box is uh, of course, documentation comes with the power cord and then the speaker itself. So pretty, pretty smooth and simple there. Plug and play system. And then this is the Zounds unit. Uh, this one was a brand new unit. Same thing. Comes with the documentation and a cable and the speaker. And the packaging for this was actually a lot better. Brand new box. Good shape. Like I said before, their flagship new model, powered PA system. Uh, if you go directly to PV's website, this shows up first as a flash advertisement. Now these guys retail for about $800 each. That's about what I can find them online everywhere and then maybe the same or a little bit more in the stores. They do have a good warranty, um, which I'll cover here in a moment. One of these guys I do have to send back. PV boasts that this is uh, designed and engineered in the USA. They have it stamped here at the bottom, but they're made in China. And that kind of makes me a little reluctant because when I spend this kind of money, I kind of try to to look for a made in America kind of it kind of has a pride that goes along with it and kind of giving jobs and keeping our economy strong. And usually the quality ends up a little bit better too. I kind of expressed my concern with PV, but they assured me that their quality standards in China are just as good as they are in the U.S., which we'll discuss here in a moment as well. So here's the scratch and dent. Uh, speaker I got from American Musical Supply. As you can see on the back, hopefully you can see it, you might not be able to, but there's, there's a couple of scratches in the heat sink, but nothing to prevent it from operating correctly. Now we're going to go ahead and turn this on. Now when I fire this up, all the lights turn on on the back, and then you hear a little pop as amp kicks in. The speaker has a built-in dual channel independent uh, inputs here. Uh, input 1 has the XLR and the Phoenix connector. Input 2 has another XLR and then an, an RCA connection. Now you can control these selections on each input with this button for line or mic. It's the same with this one, line being RCA or mic button. Turns green when it's line and orange when it's XLR. So this also features, uh, there's an LED on the front that lets you know if it's on. You can turn this to always on. Signal would be on and it, this, in the manual it advertises that uh, the light in the front will turn red when the speaker clips or always off if you have a dark setting and you don't want the uh, LEDs on the front disrupting. So this has the DynaQ which lets you choose between music or speech. Speech just, uh, highlights voice frequencies a little bit better. You could choose to bypass this whole DynaQ section here by pushing the bypass button. Red light comes on when it's up and lights off, it's contour, it acts as a loudness control. And then there's a bass enhancer. When pressed, light turns green, ups the bass output. This also has a uh, line out, which is kind of nice. It has a Phoenix out, a quarter inch out, and an XLR. This also has a sleep feature. That way uh, the speaker automatically turns off when uh, there's no signal. The manual states that it's about approximately 16 minutes without signal. All right, let me plug this unit in. This unit is from uh, Zounds.com. This was the brand new unit. Now I'm not going to go through the whole thing again. 
because it's exactly the same. What I am going to point out here is the reason why I need to return this unit. This unit's actually defective. Went ahead and turned it on here, and as you can see, the LEDs are turned on for the line in, but what I noticed here was there's a little excessive noise, and it's because these input sections are not working correctly. So it's going to have to be returned for that. Also with the RCA, I noticed it was crossing over to the uh, gain control on this side. Also that LED I talked about, the signal portion of the switch does not work. So the LED in the front does not light up. This speaker also has a little extra noise uh, when there's no signal or nothing plugged in or low volume than the, uh, the other speaker I, I received. Like we discussed before, I did have some issues with the unit I've received from Zounds. Um, this isn't Zounds' fault. This is a, a kind of a quality control issue with PV. Uh, Zounds has a really good customer service, so this speaker is actually going back and will be uh, taken care of. No problems with this speaker. This speaker plays, but has a couple issues. Um, at the end of this video, I'll post a couple pictures um, of other things I noticed um, on this unit here that I'm sending back. The internal baffling is uh, is missing out of the unit. The, the, the unit I got here has a bunch of that uh, black fuzz that lines the inside of the enclosure to help with acoustics, whereas this guy ended up missing that. Also, one thing I noticed, which I'll include in pictures at the end too, if I can get the camera to come into this port here. But uh, this unit has um, some ferrites that the, uh, the wires heading to the, the drivers are wrapped around just to help with noise uh, reduction and whatnot. This unit does not have those, and I'll include some pictures of those too, which you can see through the port where it comes through from the amplifier. All right, so the pros about these speakers is uh, they're lightweight. They're uh, 30, 39 pounds. I haven't weighed them myself, but that's what the manual says. They are light. They're lighter than my old passive system here. Um, but a lot of that's due to the lightweight Neo Magnet featured in the Scorpion 12 inch woofer. Also these enclosures are polypropylene uh, plastic enclosure. Um, the 12 sound really good. They hit really hard. They're a 1200 watt system. The ribbon sounds really nice and they are not as fragile as people think they are. Uh, another nice thing about this speaker, it's got a full handle on this side here. It's got a half handle on this side, it makes it easy to carry. It also has a wedge that we can use it as a, uh, a monitor, like a stage monitor. It's also flyable. If you look at the top of the speaker here, you can buy the uh, mount from PV, use this 5 bolt pattern. You can also hang it on its side or upside down. And then as far as cons are concerned, I haven't been able to really play them uh, yet. I just took them out of the box. Uh, I guess the cons would be I have to return one and there's some minor differences be between the two like the ferrites uh, that are wrapped for the speaker wires on this unit but it's missing uh, the internal baffling. And then this guy, no complaints, it was a scratch and dent so I was expecting to have some kind of blemish and the blemish ended up being pretty small. Other than that it's not affecting speaker performance as of yet. I've only done just kind of minor testing. Um, another con that I'd like to point out, other than the quality control issue, 